من سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل دلالة في النار ثم أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We laud him, beseech his help and in him we seek forgiveness And we seek the refuge of Allah from the mischiefness of our souls and the wrongdoings of all of our actions Whomever Allah guides no one will be able to lead him astray And whomever Allah leaves to be left astray no one will be able to guide him and I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship as a deity except Allah. He is alone, he has no partners. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah with the fear that is due to him. And do not die except as Muslims. O human beings, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and from that one soul is me. And from the two of them, meaning Adam and Eve, countless men and women spread abroad in multitude. Remember the wombs that bore you, keep the relations of family ties among you, for surely Allah is a watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah, and say that which is correct. Allah will repair all of your affairs for you, and forgive you of all of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last prophet and messenger to all mankind, they have achieved the greatest of all success in this life and the next. As to what proceeds, surely the best speech is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad and his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And the worst of all affairs are novelty, newly invented matters in al-Islam, for surely every novelty in al-Islam is an innovation, every innovation is a going astray, and every astray is in the hellfire. For those of us who have been Muslims all of their lives, or for those of us who have been Muslims for some time now, who reverted back to Al-Islam, sometimes we take for granted our Islam. And in, in, in the event that we take advantage of those particular things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, we will never be able to take advantage fully the greatest ni'mah which is Al-Islam. And sometimes we forget, while we are Muslims, we forget that there are people who when they enter into Islam, they are confronted with things that we probably have forgotten about. And one of those things that we, when we accept Islam for the first time, those things that we're confronted with, the greatest of them is to turn back from Islam after accepting Islam. For those of us who come from Muslim countries, who've been Muslims all of our lives, and for those who've been Muslims for a while, as we've said, we forget these things. Sometimes we're unmindful that when a person accepts Islam, they have a lot of obstacles against them. They're confronted with a lot. And we don't think about these things. Sometimes a man, when he accepts Islam, his wife does not accept Islam. And sometimes, which is even worse, for the woman, when she accepts Islam, she leaves Hinduism or Judaism or Christianity or the like, when she accepts Islam, it's even more tumultuous on her when her husband doesn't accept Islam. And many of us, we don't realize these things. And today, inshallah ta'ala, we want to mention just some ayat, some small ayat from the book of Allah and some statements of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa specifically for the people who just accepted Islam. 
to let them know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He hates that you go back to Christianity or back to Judaism or Hinduism. Those things that for us who've been Muslims for a long time, we forget how tumultuous and how serious the act of apostasy, the act of going back from Islam to Kufr is. And there are many stories, many stories in Islamic history of people all the way up until today of people accepting Islam and the obstacles that they faced when they accepted Islam and some of them didn't pass the test. In the time of the Prophet, in the early, early, early days of Al-Islam, in the very early days of Al-Islam, the Prophet ﷺ's companions were few. There weren't a lot of people. They were very few in number. And the Prophet ﷺ had sent his companions, some of them, to a land of Christianity. Commonly known today as Ethiopia, in those days Al-Habasha, called Abyssinia. And when he sent them there to this particular Christian emperor, Najashi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa rahimahullah, he said, go to this particular place, there is a man there of goodness, even though he was a kafir, a disbeliever. Go to him. Number one, to invite him to Al-Islam. Number two, you'll find safety and security there. And that safety and security that they found there is similar, but not the same, similar, but not the same as some instances and aspects of security and safety that some Muslims find in this land of disbelief. And one of those people that went there was Ramla, Um Habiba, the daughter of Abu Sufyan. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. May Allah be pleased with them. And her husband, Ubaidullah ibn Jahsh, was one of the people who was with her at the order at the command of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go to that place. And while they were there, those few Muslims, the Muslims there were confronted with obstacles. A small amount of those who believe in Allah on the last day in the land of disbelief, trying to practice Islam in the inception of it in the Arabian Peninsula at that time, in another place, away from the guidance, the physical, literal guidance of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on one particular night, this woman Ramla, radiallahu ta'ala anha, may Allah be pleased with her, and all of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she went to sleep. And she had a dream. And in that dream, she saw her husband. Her husband was on a ship. And the waves were overtaking the ship. And the clouds became over the boat that he was on in her dream. And things became dark. And the waves became very high and strong on him. And she became very disturbed. And this was before the Prophet wasallam. as we said, this happened in the early, early days of Al-Islam. This was before the Prophet wasallam ordered the companions and us, we who came after them, 1400 years after them, he ordered us, the Muslims, not to tell our bad dreams. This was before he ordered the Muslims not to share their bad dreams. For the Muslims, when they have a bad dream, they have been ordered by the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu salam, not to tell their bad dreams, but rather tell their good dreams. So she shared her dream with her husband. That she saw him on the ship, and the ship was going down, and the clouds were coming over, and it became very dark, and the waves became very, very high and strong. And before she could even finish the story, her husband, Ubaidullah ibn Jahsh, told her that I am leaving Islam. I have nothing to do with Al-Islam again. In fact, I'm going back to Christianity. And you have two choices. And in those days, once again, were the early days of Al-Islam, before the verses came down and the hadith came down, because the sunnah came down with the Qur'an, as the tabi'i said, the Qur'an and the sunnah came down together, the sunnah came down with the Qur'an. Before the ayat and the sunnah came down on the Prophet wasallam, we were allowed, a Muslim woman was allowed, to remain with her husband if he did not accept Islam, and she accepted Islam. But of course, after that, 
Allah sent down the, the ayat that if a man doesn't accept Islam and his wife accepts Islam, the marriage is annulled immediately. No more marriage. Completely divorced. No doubt about it. No question. But in those days, the verses didn't come down. So she shared with her husband what she had seen in her dream. And before she could even get all of the story out, he said, I'm through with Islam. I no longer believe in Islam. In fact, I'm going back to Christianity, and you have two choices. Either that you be divorced, or you become a Christian. That you become a Christian. And this woman, Ramla, radiallahu ta'ala anha, we all know the end of the story. And those who are new Muslims might not know the story. And those who've been Muslims for a while might not know the rest of the story. That the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, companion, Ramla, she eventually was separated from her husband. Because her husband not only left Islam, he went back to drinking alcohol, hanging out in the alcohol den, and he died in kufr, in disbelief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Ramla, Um Habiba, may Allah be pleased with her, to not only keep her iman, keep her faith, and keep her Islam through all that she was going through away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a land of the Christians, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had her receive the bushra, the glad tidings of the offering of marriage to her from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she married the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a gift from Allah al-Wahhab, the one who bestows the gifts, as a gift for her patience and her fortitude and her gratitude to Allah for remaining in Al-Islam. And this goes in line with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thalathun man kunna fihi wajada bihinna halawat al-iman. That whoever has three qualities inside of them, whether they are male or female, it doesn't make a difference. You're a woman, you just accepted Islam. You're a man, you just accepted Islam. If you have these three qualities inside of you, you will have tasted by way of those three qualities the sweetness of Iman, the sweetness of true faith. مَنْ كَانَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ مَسِّوَاهُمَا Whoever makes Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more beloved to them than anything other than the two of them. When you make Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more beloved to you than anything, then you have tasted the sweetness of Iman, when the other two things are accompanied with it. وَأَنْ يُحِبَّ الْمَرْأَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And a person loves another person. A brother loves his brother. A sister loves her sister in al Islam. No matter what race, what language, what color, they love you only for Allah. That's the reason why they love you. Not because you have five stores in Asbury Park. Not because you have a bunch of gas stations and restaurants. Not because you have a lot of real estate. Not because you have a lot of money. Not because you're Arab or you're non-Arab. Or because I visited you when you were sick. Or any of those things. Purely you love them only for Allah. وَأَنْ يَقْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَنْقَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ كَمَا أَنْ يَقْرَهُ أَوْ كَمَا يَقْرَهُ أَنْ يُقْفَذَ فِي النَّارِ رواه البخاري ومسلم and the third thing that that person has it inside of them, they taste the sweetness of Iman, of faith, of true faith. That third thing is that they hate to return to disbelief after Allah has saved them from disbelief, has given them security from disbelief, has made them have a place of security from disbelief, that they hate to return to disbelief like they hate to be thrown into the hellfire. Even more than that, they hate to return to disbelief even more than, than being thrown into the hellfire or to any fire. And the worst of them, of course, is the fire after this life. So when the person hates to return to disbelief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said to us that that person is going to taste the sweetness of Iman. But what we have to do, brothers, for those new Muslims, some of them are in this masjid right now, they just become Muslims in the past two, three weeks. In the past month, in the past six months, in the past year, you and I who've been Muslim 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 70 years, 
you know how difficult it is to be a Muslim in the land of the Muslim. How much more in the land of the disbelievers? So it is incumbent upon us that we assist those people who have accepted Islam and give them books and literature, give them tapes, direct them towards those things that are going to help them strengthen their iman so they won't leave. Because there are many obstacles on the path when you accept this land. There are many things that are going to come to the new Muslims that's going to make them want to leave Islam. And one of those things, especially for the women, is that when they have to cover. Now they've been on their job as a nurse, they've been in their job in the corporate world or whatever, and now they come back to work after leaving the job on Friday naked, they come back to work on Monday completely covered. Nothing is seen but the hands and the face. Can you imagine Muslims who've been Muslims all your lives, what that woman has to go through? Can you imagine that, what she has to go through? Can you imagine what the person who accepts this land, the man that accepts this land, and now instead of drinking with his buddies on the job during the break, instead of using profanity and looking at the pornographic material in the locker room, can you imagine now that he says, I'm a Muslim now? Can you imagine what happens to the woman who's been sleeping with a man that's not her husband? Living with him for five or ten years, she has children by him, and then she says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah Can you imagine what's going to happen to that woman if he doesn't want to accept Islam? So we need to be patient with those Muslims who accept Islam and try with everything that we have to guide them and steer them and even more importantly, to be kind to them, to be considerate to them, to be respectful for them, to invite them out and invite them to our homes and try to help them learn the proper way of Islam as much as we can. Because the Jews and the Christians specifically, and the Hindus and the Buddhists and the rest of them, they are not going to be pleased until they turn the Muslims back to their way. وَلَن تَرَضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودَ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Allah says, the Jews and the Christians will not be pleased till they turn you back to their way. They won't be happy. When you go back to your job after accepting Islam on Friday and you go in on Monday, you should expect from that statement of Allah in the Quran that they're going to try every single thing and there's only a few exceptions. Only a few. In general, they're going to try every single thing to make you go away from Islam explicitly or implicitly overtly or covertly, intentionally or unintentionally, they're going to try to make you leave Islam. And they really don't care what religion you go back to. They really don't care what religion you revert to or you apostate to. They just want you to leave Islam because they hate Islam. And Allah said they hate Islam. We didn't say it, Allah said it. So it is incumbent upon us to be kind to the new Muslims, all Muslims, but especially the new Muslims who doesn't know anything. They don't know Tashahud. They don't know Al-Fatiha. They don't know anything about the Quran. They don't know anything about the Sunnah. We should try to use terminologies that they understand. Sometimes when we use the Arabic terminologies, they get confused. We forget because we've been Muslims all the time. We've been Muslims a long time, so we, can, we, we, we forget. We should try with every single thing that we should bend over backwards and flip again to try to keep this Muslim into Islam. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us, Whoever leaves his deen and he dies, and he's a kafir when he leaves his deen, then all of their deeds, all of their deeds in this life and the next life, they're going to be voided out. They're going to be fruitless. وَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And they are going to be the ones who are going to be in the hellfire forever and ever and ever and they're never going to come out. If you turn away from Islam and you seek another way other than Islam وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلُ مِنْهُمْ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever seeks a way other than Islam it will never be accepted from him and in the next life he will be of the losers the people who will be in the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those whose hearts are firm on his deen and his obedience. On his deen and his obedience. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are gentle and kind with all the Muslims, no matter where they're from. But especially the ones who have just accepted Islam. And even more than that, the women who come into Islam. 
Because Allah has made them al jinsul latif. He made them the gentle creature. He's made them the soft creature. They're different from the men. And they need even extra support. So when you see her and she's not dressed totally the way she should dress, you should be patient with her because somebody was patient with you. You should be kind with her because someone was kind with you. And if you don't have mercy on the uh, creatures of Allah, then the one who's above the seven heavens and a man of befitting his majesty will not be merciful to you. Walhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-ameen Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in wa ba'd Dear believers in al-Islam Whether you are new or whether you are old We have to understand that in this country There are many, many obstacles As we've mentioned, there are some things which you don't even realize Are obstacles Many things The person who goes and looks at TV they're going to find things that are going to debar them away from Islam. I remember as a child, and I have been a Muslim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, now for 28 years. But now in retrospect, reflecting, as an American, Muslim, growing up in this country, I look back and I can remember now that I'm a Muslim, then making fun of Islam and trying to mock Islam and get people away from Islam. When I was a little boy, five years old, looking at cartoons, and they still do it to this day. You see the person dressed in that which we know as Arabian clothing. And the person gets on the floor like he's making salah. He says, salami, salami, baloney. This is something that we grew up with as Americans. And we didn't realize until we accepted Islam that they were making fun of the Muslims making salah. And they still have these type of cartoons on TV right now. If they put that in the mind of a child that's on this minbar standing in front of you, what do you think they're going to do right now? 28 years, 38 years, 40 years later to the people who accept Islam when they turn on the TV. When you turn on the radio, you hear people talking against Islam. So the new Muslims, when they read the newspaper, when they go on the internet, they're going to find an abundance, the majority of the things. When you go into a search engine on the internet, when you put the word Muslim or Islam in, the majority of the things that people are going to run into, and Allah knows best, the majority, are going to be things that are going to steer the people away from Islam. And there's a campaign to steer Muslims away from Al-Islam. The apostasy rate in America is very, very low. Walhamdulillah. But the apostasy rate in the Muslim countries is very high. The apostasy rate in the land of the Muslims is very high. In fact, one of the highest is Malaysia. Where people are leaving Islam by the grove. In abundance, as wagon. People are leaving Islam to the point where they have to have special da'wah programs to get Muslims who have left Islam and their fathers, 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 fathers. I see it with my own eyes when I was there. People who had seven, eight, nine generations of Islam, special programs to bring people, the youth especially, the youth especially, back to Islam. And they're flooding the market, Yahoo, the Jews, and otherwise. You can go online right now and you'll find even even made up verses of Qur'an, placed into the Mus'haf of Qur'an online. And they invite the people by putting Islamic terminologies or Islamic home pages. And when you go to it, the new Muslim, he thinks it's Islam. The next thing you know, he's a kafir. He's left Islam. And finally, brothers and sisters in Islam, it is important to know that the Muslim who accepts Islam in America, even though Islam has some strength in America, and even though there is some firmness among the Muslims and Islam in America, Nonetheless, when a person leaves Islam in the land of the Muslim, we should never look at that person who left Islam in the land of the Muslims like the Muslim who leaves Islam in the land of the Muslim. The one who leaves Islam in the land of the non-Muslims, you shouldn't look at that person the way you look at the person who leaves Islam in the land of the Muslim. Because the person who leaves Islam in the land of the Muslims, in many cases, they really didn't leave Islam. They just have some misunderstanding because they don't have ulama here in America to teach them and guide them. They don't have places where they can really learn tafsir and learn the correct aqidah except for a few places in the masjid when they're open. If they're open. If they're teaching. So the person who accepts Islam and leaves Islam in America, those people need to be looked at with a special eye. Just because she removes her clothing, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our women. 
Just because she removes her clothing, that doesn't mean she left this land. Everyone who falls into kufr, it doesn't mean that kufr fell into them. This is a basic principle in Islam. Man sabata islamuhu biyaqeen la yazulu bishak. The person whose Islam is established, then nothing can remove him from Islam. If it's done by certainty, then doubt can't remove him. You have to be made, you have to make sure that that person does not believe anymore. And even when they say, I don't believe, ask them why. They'll tell you because my Muslim husband, he beats me up. They'll tell you because my Muslim husband, he doesn't treat me properly. They'll tell you because it's so rough on my job and they look at me the way I'm dressed or the way I act and when I make salah, they make fun of me. And I just can't take anymore, but I still believe in Allah. And I still believe, see, but we've already put him in the paper. So we should be very, very careful about putting a person out of Islam, especially the new people. Because you have cases right here in America of people accepting Islam and leaving and then coming back to Islam, then leaving and then coming back to Islam and then leaving and then coming back to Islam. We've seen it with our own eyes. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ كَفَرُوا ثُمَّ آمَنُوا ثُمَّ زَادُوا كُفْرًا Allah says, truly those who believe, and then they disbelieve, and then they believe, and then they disbelieve, and then they believe, and then they're increased in kufr. Allah is not going to forgive them then. Allah will not forgive them then. And they won't be guided to a way. So we should be patient with the new Muslims, brothers and sisters, especially the women. Especially the women. We should be patient with the new Muslim, we should be kind with them, and we should guide them as much as we are able to guide them, and we should make dua for them, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us good examples for the new Muslim. And make us good examples for the new Muslim. Make us good example, O oh Allah, for the good, for the new Muslim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam.